Great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Small minds discuss people. Henry Thomas Buckle once said, Welcome to The Advocate, where thought-provoking topics are discussed with no hold back here on Plus TV Africa. We basically call it Spade by its name. I'll be talking about the creative industry and how it is fast becoming an endangered space that we must ultimately protect. If Edo Lakpo's myth is with a little or no representation of women in the tech world. Peter is talking about how to engage millennials and Gen Z in the same workplace. And finally, Tonya is pointing out a rising crisis in the educational system, which is the school fees. Sit back, and after this break, we'll be here to dissect it all. Stay with us. The creative industry, an endangered idea. Creativity in itself has a broad range of meanings and across sectors. The creative industry will cover sectors such as communications, media, advertising, finance, technology, fintech, entertainment, real estate, fashion, engineering, academia, security. I mean, you get the point, right? Every industry has some measure of creativity embedded, inherent or inherent in it. As a result of this, the industry in itself should be safely protected and encouraged to thrive, grow, and succeed. Because the death of the creative industry is the death of many other sectors that directly impact the economy, and in fact, the GDP of any nation. So I'm interested statistics will help you put this in context. Right, in the United Kingdom, Center for Economic and Business Research, CEBR, reported that the creative industry realized 25.2 billion in direct turnover, 170,250 jobs, and 7.1 billion pounds in employee compensation. Generally, the industry realized 48 billion pounds in turnover, 23 billion pounds in GVA, that's a gross value add, 363,713 jobs, and 13.4 billion pounds in employee compensation alone. In Singapore, the whole country has been impacted by the digital revolution and has the highest mobile penetration rates in the world, and also the most active consumers of online video. The creative industry in Singapore amounted to $23.9 billion in direct contribution to the GDP, an additional $12 billion in indirect contribution, and $12.7 billion in value added, which is total of 5.9% of the GDP of the nation. This cluster, comprising more than 4,500 companies in China, According to the NBS, the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics in China, you know, added that China's creative industries increased from 1.052 trillion in 2010 to 2.735 trillion in 2015, representing an expanded share in GDP from 2.75% to 3.82%. In terms of growth rates, the China's creative sector you know, achieved 11% in 2015 higher than the macroeconomic level. The cultural and creative industries have thus become a main impetus for promoting China's economic growth and optimizing its structure. In South Africa, it was found that the core creative industries contributed 3.5% to the South African GDP in 2017. That is 155 billion rands, you know, which is a total share of 5.29% of the GDP. The creative industries contributed 2.53% to the gross value add of South Africa, which is 1.56 billion rands. In Nigeria, a new report shows Nigeria's creative industry is the country's large, second largest employer of labor and has the potential to produce 2.7 million jobs by 2025. The study by Jobber Ramam also finds that the creative industry employs 4.2 million people across five sectors, media, entertainment, beauty, and lifestyle, visual arts, as well as tourism and hospitality. The creative industry in Nigeria is said to be worth an estimated 2.270 billion naira. It is also worthy of note that the creative industry in Nigeria is largely driven by the youth population, who account for almost half of the whole population. The question then begs itself, why isn't there an enabling environment for the youth to thrive in Nigeria? The several reports of this population being harvested to other countries due to the hostile environment in Nigeria 
how do we then protest? How do we then protect these endangered species? We must indeed start to get creative ways to protect our young, creative minds. That was a mouthful. I know, right? <laughs> I'm a creative industries person. Mm -hmm. I'm in it. I'm a content, like, create content. I produce content. That's what I've been doing for the past 15 years in Nigeria. <laughs> so I understand. Now, it's not set up for, unfortunately, for producers or uh, content creators, creators really to succeed. It just isn't. It's set up for um, those with the infrastructure to succeed. Mm -hmm. And um, when you look at, okay, you have this creative idea, right? You want to get it out, you put it out. And creators, we have so much passion. Um, but there's a disconnect between those who are creating the passion mm -hmm. and those who can help get it out there and fund. And when it comes down to it, it's money. And whether any value is actually seen in funding these creative um, you know, projects. And other countries are seeing the value, which is mm -hmm. why we're seeing uh, uh, just an enormous drain of our youth mm -hmm. who are creatives, who are passionate, and who have those skills already. You know, a lot of uh, creative companies are investing in training mm -hmm. and then employ those um, kids they train but then months, just a few months later, they're poached by Canada, they're poached mm -hmm. by the US. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, those who are the gatekeepers here are not willing to do what is necessary in order that we can succeed internally. They're just busy looking at, in the way it is with so many things, just lining their pockets. Mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately, there isn't that value. When you look at how our industry is even set up, it's set up to fail. If we, if we don't even look at the new stuff, right, and we go back and the fact that we still need traditional media here because a lot of people don't have access to data, mm -hmm. they don't have access to the internet or devices, and they're still getting um, consuming through traditional means, radio and television, right? In other countries, you create content, you, you pitch for people mm -hmm. to license your content, they pay you yeah. a valuable sum, yes. mm -hmm. they pay you a valuable sum for that content. Mm -hmm. Here, you pay them to put your content on air. Yeah. It's just set up to fail from the beginning, and it's really, really unfortunate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agree. It's, it's, you know, um, you know, just listening to you, and, you know, when Tolu talked about, yeah, there's a massive, and unfortunately, you know, it's easy to know when medical doctors are leaving the country. It's easy to know when nurses are leaving, but we don't know how many, how much of our economy has been depleted by creative people who can just, See, I'm not even, let me even start from the basic. You know when um, Governor Babio was in power, he did some things that made almost like, make it look like um, uh, Kwaibon was going to be the destination for movie producers, mm -hmm. um, whilst, um, um, I've Calabar. forgotten the Calabar, mm -hmm. the governor that was there at yeah. the time, built Tinapa, which was all attracted the likes mm -hmm. of, um, um, was it, um, Ebony, Ebony Light TV, to go there. Mm -hmm. But then you now find out that that place became a money gulper. It's almost like it doesn't pay, because the process of you getting there, they didn't make it easy. They, yeah. It was like, you build a very fantastic facility and put a very high mm. wall. There are no gates. There are mm -hmm. walls. Mm. And so let's, let's leave all of that. All of that are in the past. I think the first thing is um, our leaders, politicians need to, maybe oil should actually dry in Nigeria mm -hmm. to get us to start thinking. Mm -hmm. Politicians, Absolutely. everything we are saying, they, they just amount to grammar because mm -hmm. those guys in Abuja are waiting for, you know, um, the sharing formula. Let's <laughs> generate the money and share it. They are not looking at the money that could come from all these yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Make it easy for this guy to use his phone mm -hmm. and get cheap data. Yeah. Yeah. And Make it easy so for him to charge his phone. It's, it's not as hard as you think, you know, so because mm -hmm. it, like, like, just like Tonya said, so it's like a continuum. You see, on one side of it, there's a creative. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's passionate about what he does. Yeah. He's an artist. On the other side of it is a capitalist, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. someone that can make money, mm -hmm. money out of what of they're him. passionate about. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Create the bridge mm -hmm. between the artists mm -hmm. and the capitalists such that I can just do what I love to do. I can thrive at what I love to do. Mm -hmm. Then you've created an enabling environment for that to be valuable to me and to the economy. 
Because it's two things. I mean, I would have created value. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. I'm fulfilled. But at the same time, I'm also adding to the GDP. I mean, look at all these countries. Look at how much the creative industry adds to their mm -hmm. GDP because they've created an environment mm -hmm. that allows creativity not just to thrive, but also to be valuable financially. Yeah. You know? You know, I've... Yeah. Do, do you want to? No, no, go ahead. So I think um, the creative industry is very similar to, to the tech industry mm. where um, you have people that are putting in their hard work, that are doing the same thing that the, their counterparts abroad are doing, but they're not getting the result mm. over here. So it's like, I'm working so hard, but there's nothing. So it's like a case of a prophet is never respected in his mm -hmm. own. Yeah. And now they are seeing it that, like, oh, I can go to... Dubai and then I'll be paid better than this yes. place, I'll be treated better, I can go to the US, to the UK, so there's no need. I mean, take for example, um, KOB2, King of, King of Boys 2, yeah. Kemi released it on Netflix because she knows she'll be able to get her money back. Mm, yeah. awesome. hmm. And Netflix is not owned by Africans, mm -hmm. it's not owned by Nigerians, mm -hmm. it's international. So, yeah. And they've created that platform where Nigerian producers can now say, okay, when, if I create my movie to this standard, I, to to I can put it on this platform yeah. and I can get my money back. Yeah. And I feel like we need more of that. We, um, the artists, the musicians, the people like that, where there's a platform that they can trust and they can get their money back. But again, this money is being ex um, exported, is, is going back yeah. to the US. Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. here. Because like, they the, Yeah, yeah. No. the I government... about it. I did research. I did small research. I mean, Google is... Try it on your Google. Mm -hmm. I just Googled content industry worth in the US. And you see the media and entertainment industry in the US is worth almost $1 trillion. It's mad. It's just the content industry. It's people mad. that provide content. Mm. So, Toya, you're up to... You know, trust me, you're onto something. You know, we just need to it's make just sure... A, you we know, have yeah. to kind of wake people up. I'm vigorously trying to shake people and mm -hmm. say, look, what are you waiting for? You know, what are you looking for? Every day there's, there's new youth coming mm -hmm. and the ones that we have now also are doing great things. Mm -hmm. And even, I also say, it's not limited to, to youth. Mm -hmm. I always say my, my, on our platform, the youngest producer is four years old. The mm -hmm. oldest yeah. one is 66. Wow. So it's not only a youth thing. There's people who have ideas, people who are creative, people who are dreamers, people who have talent mm -hmm. that can actually create things that the massive population that we have want to see. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that we just have these rigid gatekeepers mm -hmm. who are just focused on certain areas, mm -hmm. but also we're limited in terms of investment opportunities because our system is set up backwards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So can I ask a question? Very, more like a playing the devil's advocate. So I would ask, so Tonya, would you rather advise these kids to just keep hoping on hope or hoping against hope? As someday the gatekeepers, because Nigerian gatekeepers don't die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They succeed mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. So, do you see that the, any change happening in the next 15, 20 years? Because if this continues this way, would you rather that this um, talents mm. just die off or they should export what they have to where they are going to be compensated? I'm just asking. I think that's a really good question. I think it's multilateral. Mm. I think that there's always just the way our general society, not even this industry is set up, there's always going to be these gatekeepers or haterators, right? So I would say, number one, to anybody who has a dream or is doing this already, you have to try your best to keep going mm -hmm. because our culture, our society depends on the storytellers. Mm -hmm. We're just using different technology to do it. Storytellers are key. You know, history is key. Mm -hmm. Our voice is key. We don't want Oibo people telling our story. Absolutely. Let's encourage us to tell the story, which means there's a certain amount of skill share that needs to happen, mm -hmm. of democratization mm -hmm. that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it, I said, it's a global world. It's global. We need to be looking about here and in Africa and the wider international community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would never say limit yourself to just here. No, be looking. Mm -hmm. Whatever technology is available to you, yeah. get yeah. that technology if you can. Great. Don't yeah. be just looking here. You have to be working the traditional and you have to be working the modern. Yeah. And you just have to try your best. It's a hard game, yeah. but I'm still in it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that if you do it consistently enough, and you get get you keep getting better. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a time when the music industry in Nigeria was exactly. wasn't that good. I mean, now mm -hmm. it's the best. It's one mm -hmm. of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. It will stand side mm -hmm. by side with any other music industry mm -hmm. in the world. I mean, Nollywood. 
Yeah. That's not when Hollywood was, yeah. you know, yeah. suffering. But I mean, consistency. But obviously, like you said, there's a bit of also the governmental support mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that got them to where they were, to where they are now. But you know, it was also, you've seen over the years, mm -hmm. they just keep, I mean, keeping, keeping at it, you know, mm -hmm. getting better. Yeah. And then, you know, um, I feel, I personally feel there should be a ministry for, for just creative. set up just mm -hmm. for that. Oh, it doesn't I mean it's big. It. It's a big enough. There's a ministry of creativity. I, I think we, we have it, but they're not doing anything <laughs> as most of the <laughs> ministries. No, because, no, because, okay, let's talk about that. Actually, that's, that's, that's a good point. Let's talk mm -hmm. about that. So CBN has the CIFI, CIFI loan, Creators Industry mm -hmm. Loan, and so mm -hmm. does BOI. So they are thinking about these things. They yes. are thinking about, okay, there's this industry. Nollywood has been here, has shown the way. Mm -hmm. But again, the Niger factor kicks in. Yeah. It doesn't reach the people it's meant to be funded. Mm -hmm. Funded, And unfortunately, or it takes too long, or mm -hmm. there's just, you have to put up collateral. All these things that kind of, the barrier is very, very high to, yeah. to entry. But we remain hopeful. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Up, I mean, that was quite interesting. Up next mm -hmm. is Ife Dolakwa. Please stay with us.